to do. <coughs> oh no, is he still waiting? Your turn, Alice. I haven't had a rest all evening. You can have the pink room. Pink room's locked. I tried it earlier. Funny. Shouldn't be. Here, use me master key. You've been very patient, darling. But see how lucky you are. Don't look so nervous, me pet. Your first time, is it? Had a bet with your pals, did you? Now, come on, darling. Get them clothes off. What's the matter, darling? Where are you going? It's only some old tight... Oh, my God! I find this quite insufferable. Yes, sir. Very affecting. Damn it, Crib. I mean, the audacity of these people. Giving an ostentatious funeral to the wickedest man in London. Fred Calhoun was a monster. A trafficker in human flesh. And bricks and mortar. I've heard it said that he owned more property in London than the Sovereign herself. Every house... Yes, oh, quite, yes. quite. It's fitting he should be murdered in one of his own dens of vice. Study those faces, Crib. One of them may belong to a murderer. Ederixit cornu salutis nobis, in domo David pueri sui, sicut locutus et per os sanctorum, quia seclo sunt. Good Lord. Presbyterum I know that chap. Salute. Joe Calhoun's and the dead man's brother. You've probably seen his picture in criminal records. He's done some jug in his time. Grievous bodily harm, intimidation, forcible entry. But the only thing he hasn't been up for is murder. Well, I'm thankful for that, unless I'm very much mistaken. He's a member of my club. Damn it, I'm sure he is. I don't understand it. The cocoa tree is most exclusive. I only got in myself on the second ballot. Addandam scientum salutis flavis. Fancy seeing you here, Mr. Epplewhite. They kindly let me pass. Uh, I'm a little bit short of the readies. Ah. You'll get no more money out of me. Well, it might be wiser to reconsider, Mr. Epplewhite. That criminal in my club, rubbing shoulders with members of both houses, bishops, judges, he ought to have been blackballed. He's just inherited half the West End. Not to mention a family business with a staff of hundreds. It's the law, ain't it? What was that?
I'm right, am I not, in supposing you gentlemen are here to represent the law? What's your business? Who the deuce are you? Lie me. Keep your voice down. It's all right, sir. I know him. He pimps for the Calhouns. Let's see. Hawkins, Dickens, got you. Vulcans. Can we talk in confidence? Well, they're a bit past eavesdropping round here. Well, never mind them. Who's this? Chief Inspector Jowett of Scotland Yard. If you have anything to say... For a consideration. What's that? Chief Inspector, is it? It's a big pot, isn't it, Sergeant? Fred Kaloon would have liked that. Chief Inspector at his funeral. But tell me, uh, would a Chief Inspector have the power to give a man what every boy gets on his first day at school? A clean slate. We are not here to play parlor games. State your business in plain language. I can't speak plain, a Chief Inspector. You know, I want your guarantee that if I tell you what I know, all outstanding charges against the name of Vulcan's Charles W. will be dropped. I guarantee. I don't care for this. Don't care for it at all. Shall we hear what he's got to tell, sir, the nature of the information? I'm not sure that I want to be implicated. Well, we won't objectify him, sir. Might I suggest you spend a few moments conversing with the angels over there? Hmm. Now, Vulcan's, what have you got to blow? Oh, I want to deal with him, not you, Crib. He's the governor here. Correction, Vokins. He doesn't talk to Knox. You deal with me. Now, what do you know? Well, how about this? <laughs> Listen, Chief Inspector. All I want is a chance to go straight. I can't make a decision here, Vokins. I'll have to see your record. All right, you've got till tomorrow night. I'll be in the feathers in Hart Street. Leave him, Sergeant. We can pick him up later. We'll need all the help we can get, sir. Not all your criminal element belongs to gentlemen's clubs. making a mistake, I swear. On the contrary, my friend, the mistake was yours. No! 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 Well, it's a possibility, sir. Come in. I'll institute one or two inquiries. Mm. Yes, Thackeray, what is it? I wanted to see you on a personal problem, sir. Well, it's a delicate matter concerning my health, sir. Uh, I find it takes my mind off my duties. It slows me up. Come to the point, Constable. What do you want? A two weeks sick leave, if you please, sir. Two weeks? Good heavens, what's the matter with you? You don't look ill. Oh, well, I went to see my doctor yesterday, sir. Um, he says I need to go into hospital for a small operation. Does he, by Joe? Is this an emergency, Thackeray? Oh, no, I wouldn't put it that strong, sir. I've had it for some time now. It's, uh, just uncomfortable. Yes? Oh, when I need to go to the... Oh, I see. A fundamental problem, eh? Been sitting on it for some years, have you? Very well. You realise you'll be stopped a shilling every day or off duty, police regulations? Uh, yes, sir. My doctor says there's a bed available at St Mark's on Monday. Monday? It's out of the question. We're far too busy with this Calhoun affair. Application refused. Come and see me again in three months' time if there's still a basic problem. Exercise is very efficacious. Or so I'm told. Dismissed. Now, one moment, Thackeray. Yes. Yes. I've changed my mind, Thackeray. We mustn't let you suffer in silence. You can go into Charing Cross Hospital today. St Mark's on Monday. 
Charing Cross, Thackeray. Just report today with your nightshirt and your sponge bag, and we'll arrange the rest. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, Sarge. Thank you, sir. Got to be eliminated. I understand me. But we really hammered him the other night, Mr. Calhoun. I could have sworn he was a goner. He went down like a skittle. He didn't move a muscle. He still succeeded in getting himself moved to Charing Cross Hospital, didn't he? <laughs> Get in there. Finish him off. Ah. Clumsy darling. But we can't snuff him out in hospital, Gov. Why not? They can handle a body. <laughs> they got facilities. But it's full of people. Doctors, patients, nurses. And visitors. You can pay him a visit. <laughs> Take him a bunch of flowers. <laughs> they can put them on the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> now, just once more, and then you have a go. Six pennies, right? Now, keep the arm quite still, and oh, Bob's your oh, uncle. Oh, <laughs> you have a go, Lucy. Go on, sister's in her office. Yeah. I did it! Oh, easy! <laughs> well, I told you there's nothing to it. You have a go, Bessie, my love. Might as well, then. Oh, oh, there you are. Oh. I said it wasn't so easy. <laughs> oh, I think there was one under here, it's wasn't the back there? Of it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Nurse! Nurse! Oh, it's my fault entirely, sister. Who is this barbarian running amok in my ward? Back into bed with you at this instant. Yes, sorry, sister. You're the new admission, aren't you? What is your name? Uh, Thackeray, ma'am. I'd just like to say, say that these nothing. young ladies... I've met your type before. You may have friends in high places who can guarantee your admission into one of London's most overcrowded hospitals, but you'll get no soft soap from me. And you can stop corrupting young nurses. It won't be countenanced in my ward, Mr Thackeray. What are you in for? Farmers. Farmers? Farmer Giles. <laughs> Thank you, nurse. I beg your pardon. Piles. I see. Cascara for you, then. Two spoons full, I think. Oh, that's very good of you, sister. Don't believe I had any lunch today. Can't think why. Must have been thinking of something else. You work too hard. One day you'll find yourself in one of the beds here. Oh, God forbid. Uh, no offence intended. If only you'd let me help you. You never rest. Uh, mentally, I do. Haven't you noticed? Sometimes when I'm operating... Still, if you really wish to help, I'd be obliged if you'd have my instruments washed. They were rather grubby when I used them yesterday. Oh, of course. But I meant help in other ways. Your clinic in Stepney. I could help with that if you'd let me. I'd rather you didn't mention that here. It's not work for a lady of refinement. I could help you, Mr. Hepperwhite. God knows the work is bad enough here. Hannibal Road can't be worse. <coughs> there are things about which you know nothing. And let it stay that way. Oh, Struth. You'll be in trouble again, Mr Thackeray, if you don't get back into bed sharpish. What's going on there? Cupping. The patient's got concussion. That'll bring him round quicker than El could scorch a feather. Cupping works straight for most any ailment. Oh, glory. I'll leave him for a bit. Doesn't seem to be doing much good. It's nearly time for the visitor's bill. We'd better get straightened up before sister comes. Visitors? Oh, that'll be nice. I'll clean the vases, ready for the flowers. Flowers? Oh, that will cheer him up. Nurse, this is the uh, surgical ward, yes? Yes. But don't go in, mister. Visitors must wait for the bell.
Schlubby in the bed. Ah. Remove those screens. Put that man's hands out of sight and turn Mr. Pollock face upwards. He's been like this all day, has he? Like what, Sarge? Out to the world. Oh, I think so. They've had the screens round. He moans a bit from time to time. Nice of you to come and see me. Back into bed, Mr Thackeray. Moans, does he? Moaning's no use. We need to hear him sing. Sing? In form, Thackeray. Vokins is a squealer. He had some information about the Calhouns to trade. Fixed a time to meet us. Got set upon in Hart Street. He was just breathing when we found him. Fancy me ending up in the next bed to him. Oh, Struth. How are they treating you here, then, Thackeray? No worse than Scotland Yard, eh? It's deplorable. Taking liberties with a man's health. Not at all. It's the best place for him. Mine! I didn't ask to be sent in here to share a ward with an informer. Well, you get your operation quicker now, and you won't lose your shilling a day. All we're asking in return is that you keep your eye on Vokins. When he wakes up, find out what he knows. Yes, Sarge. Somebody tried to kill him last night, and it could happen again. So look out for any suspicious persons. We try to keep his whereabouts a secret. That's why he's in surgical ward, not in casualty. But take note of everybody. Doctors, nurses, visitors. We're dealing with professionals. Hold on, Sarge. What shall I do if someone has a go at him? Restrain him. What with? A bedroom slipper? Cheer up, man. You'll be back at work in no time. It seems to me I haven't knocked off yet. Ooh, I brought you something. These. Uh, this. Thanks, Sarge. Is this the casualty ward, love? No, it's not. Through the corridor and left. Oh, so. Oh. Good morning, gentlemen. I trust you all had a good night's sleep. Ah, yes. Now, the probe, if you please, Beadle. Open your mouth. Display your tongue. Don't I know you? Uh... If I might interpose, Mr. Hepplewhite, you operated on Monday. Oh, is that so? Well, you have a look. Tell me what you see. No, 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 no. Not like that, Mr. Dangerfield. Put out your tongue. Display it. There, like that, with confidence. Now you have a go. No, not him, the patient. Yeah, better, better. It's only a small point, gentlemen, but worth making. The patient looks to you for confidence. Now, the pulse. It's a question of individual preference, but I always take the left hand. You took it on Monday, Mr. Applewhite. Did I really? Good, good. Right, now then. What have we here, sister? Well, bless my soul, I don't believe it. Good morning. How are you feeling this morning? Oh, that's a fine pair of buckets, Mr. Very handsome. What do you think about then, eh? Fancy brush with a pair of these? I don't think so, thank you very much. Oh, well, suit yourself, if that's your inclination. Oh, very lovely. Made to order, I know. Oh, I could take a shine to them easy. Keep away from me, you fainted hussy. All right, bossy boots, keep your hair on. I'll send for the police. Talk of the blooming devil. Come on, Alice. I want a word. Here. What's your game? An old one, Sonny, and you're too young to play. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Vokins. Are you awake? What's happened to me? Oh, it's all right, mate. Where am I? Oh, the best place. Who are you? Just out of the patient. Can you help me? I'll get a nurse. Help! Help! I need proper help. I'll make it worth your while. What do you want me to do, then? Can anybody hear us? No. I'm in danger of my life. I've got to get out of here before they finish me off. Can you help? Listen, mate, you've got it all wrong. This is Charing Cross Hospital. They get you back on your feet. <laughs> oh, that man. That will what? He's going to kill me. A surgeon? Oh, no, he's a bit absent-minded, I grant you, but he wouldn't kill anyone, not deliberate anyway. He's going to operate on me tomorrow. Got to get on my feet. I've got oh, to get out of here. You can't do that. You don't know what injuries you've got. I've got to get to the police. Look, lie down, Mr. Vokins. I shouldn't tell you this, but I'm a copper myself. You? Just because I'm wearing a nightshirt. Would you happen to know a Chief Inspector Jowett? Yes, I know him. Listen, I've got to speak to Jowett before they do for me. Can you help? Well, I wasn't counting on a visit from the Chief Inspector. But I suppose I can try and get a message to him. Get him here. You'll be saving my life. <coughs> Taking years off mine. Now, Lisa, this is your room, is it? You must be joking. It's potluck round here. Whichever room's free, we take. But it's the room where you found Fred Calhoun dead. Look, I don't know nothing about that murder. All I know is I brought a young gentleman up here to have a good time, and he spotted Fred Calhoun stretched out on that tiger skin. What happened then? Well, it was off like a lamp I haven't seen him since. How did you get on with Mr Calhoun? Yeah, what's this about? I mean, if you're suggesting... Don't suppose you ever saw much of the Governor. He was too busy raking the profits. Who's your fancy cove? Charlie Vokins. Vokins? You like him, do you? Charlie's all right. Keeps his eye on us. Didn't they tell you? He took a beating. He's out of the world. Charlie, Lord, love a duck. Why? Could have seen too much. So, Fred's dead, Charlie's laid up. You're under new management now. Brother Joe. Lucky Joe, inheriting all this. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Does that make me a legacy? No, no, no. I'm not here for that. Then you're in the wrong place, Scotler. Get back on the pad. Now, Sergeant Cribb, let's speak plainly, shall we? I don't care for your methods. Skulking around the tombstones at my brother's funeral and entering my premises under false pretenses? You've got questions. I'll suggest you put them to me. No future in it, Mr Calhoun. I ask you where you were on the night of the murder. You tell me you have witnesses to prove you are on the other side of London. End of questions. End of investigation. Case closed. Don't you want your brother's killer found? Not by you, thanks. We can manage ourselves. We're a better place than Scotland Yard. Find yourself something more useful to do, like rounding up stray dogs. My ladies tell me it isn't safe to walk down the streets these days. Get your cab. I'll, uh, walk. Thanks. Uh, if we meet again, Copper, it might not be so jolly.
you know what room this is? It's where your brother Fred was murdered, Mr. Calhoun. Yeah. Do you describe me as a man of sentiment? Don't be afraid, Lawrence. No, Governor. Then why do you think I brought you in here? To show us your main business, Mr. Calhoun. Yeah. You disappoint me, gentlemen. I expected results. We found him, all right, Gov, but there's this geezer in the next bed. He don't miss a thing. We think the law could have put him in as a bodyguard. Who was he, then? A prize fighter? Ha! <laughs> Jim Mace? Yeah, just some ugly cove with a beard. Give him a shave, then. Oh, saucy. Who's a naughty peeper, then? Don't look so guilty, darling. Flossie ain't shocked. You haven't got an armful. You might as well get an eyeful. With me, you get both. My hat! My hat. Sarge, something happened to your hat? Slightly dented, but intact. What have you got to report? The theatre should be ready by five tomorrow afternoon. I'll take this man Thackeray first. Should be straightforward enough. Tonsillectomy, isn't it? No, Mr. Hepplewhite. I always write the operations opposite the names for you. Oh, indeed you do, sister. Oh, yes, it might be difficult to find tonsils there. Um... This patient next to Thackeray. Mr. Vokins? Yes. Don't see his name here. No, if you recall, he's not for surgery. He's the man the police brought in with severe concussion, superficial cuts and bruises, but nothing broken, I think. I expect to have him on his feet tomorrow. Ah. Won't see him in the theatre, then. And he's terrified of Epplewhite, the senior surgeon. He's got it into his head that Epplewhite means to kill him. The senior surgeon? That's strange. Must be the concussion. Oh, no, he's as sharp as you or me now, Sarge. But he's petrified every time Epplewhite passes by. The strange thing is that Epplewhite seems to know him. He gave quite a start this morning when he saw him on his rounds. Better make some inquiries. Now, listen, Calhoun's bullies have got orders to silence Vokings, and they know about you. Now, I've got some men downstairs, but they could slip past, so don't fall asleep. Oh, there's not much chance in this place, Sarge. I mean it. Anything else from Vokings? He's desperate to see Jowett. Is he? Ah, they brought you round then, Vokins. Ugly business. Didn't see your attackers, I suppose. It's all a blank to me, Sergeant Cribb. Listen, I've got important information for Chief Inspector Jowett. Ah, you remember that then? I must speak to him. Well, you can talk to me. Hmm. Jowett or no one. You can talk to me. <coughs> can I help you, sir? Just going to have a word with sister. Oh. Can I help sister? Oh, oh thank you. Uh, I dropped some money. Uh, I am obliged to you. Were you wishing to speak to me? The senior surgeon, Mr. Hepperwhite. Oh, yes. You know him well? Extremely well for many years, Sergeant Cribb. He's quite distinguished. He's brilliant. A little in the clouds, but that is to be expected of a man at the top of his profession. I can't imagine why he interests the police. He's a saint. I mean it. He does charitable work among the lower orders of society. A man of his eminence. What form does this charity of Mr. Hepperwhite's take. He holds a surgery every Monday afternoon in the East End. It's absolutely free. The poor and needy go to him in droves. He's been doing it for years and hardly anyone here has heard of it. Except you. He was obliged to confide in me. If he is wanted urgently here, I know where he can be reached, but it would have to be an extreme emergency for me to disturb him. Ah, you have his address then? 
It was vouchsafed in confidence. Oh, I'm known for my discretion. Here, what's going on? Barber, mate. We've got to shave you. Oh, I think there must be some mistake. You've got an operation tomorrow, have you? Oh, let see that. Where's the shaving brush? No, you haven't got a brush! Are you all right, Mr. Vakins? You're a hero. You just saved my life, Mr. Thackeray. Oh, Lord. Get down from there this instant, you wicked, wicked man. I knew it from the moment you came into my ward. You're a monster, a creature of uncontrollable violence, a gorilla. Nurses, seize him. It's all right, sister. I promise I won't give you any more trouble. Animal. If you'll just let me explain. But, sister, he, uh... Please, Mr. Vokins. Matron shall hear of this. Nurses, attend to this. Bear garden. If only she'd listened, I could have explained. For everyone's sake, go to sleep. Don't so much as bat an eyelid before morning. Nurse. Mr. Thackeray? Yes. I want you to know I'm deeply obliged to you. I tried to explain to the sister myself, but. Doesn't really matter. Mr. Thackeray? Yes. I was wondering, how did you know they weren't real barbers? Sister shaved me this morning. Yes, yes, undeniably. Uh, Chief Inspector Jowett, isn't it? Well, yes, as a matter of fact. Well, I thought I'd recognise the face. Saw you at my brother Fred's funeral. Decent of you to be there. <laughs> he had a long association with Scotland Yard. Mm. I won't be long with this. I've got a billiard table booked in uh, oh, ten minutes. <laughs> How about the uh, bicycling times? Eh? I am perfectly content to wait, thank you. Oh. Spare a moment, sir. Your hat, man, your hat. Shh. Two men had a go at Vokins in the hospital last night, sir. Did they, by Joe? They didn't kill him. Thackeray took them on. They retired hurt. I've put uniform men on guard now. No, that's a wise decision. So you, you've dealt with it, then? Vokins is conscious, sir. He's ready to talk. Is he? That needs thinking about. I'm not sure about giving him a clean slate. I'd like you to talk to him today, sir. Oh, very well. I'll get authority. See me at the yard at four. Yours, I think. Ah, oh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Good. Ah, uh, James. Mr. Calhoun? All in, Mr. Hepplewhite? By no means, Mr. Calhoun. I lead a very active life, but I'm uncommonly robust. Mm -hmm. I was referring to the game. Would you prefer to play spot stroke bard or uh, all in? Oh, spot bard as usual. The fiver on the outcome, as I say when I start to operate. Mm. Oh, bad luck. You're at uh, Charing Cross Hospital, aren't you? Yes. Someone I know was admitted there this week. Uh, 
He manages one of my uh, bed and board establishment. Charlie Vokins, he uh, got north down in the street. Vokins, yes, we did find a bed for him. Luckily enough, I know the man. I had to talk to your brother about him. Rest his soul. Amen. I hope he wasn't in the nature of a complaint. No, just concussion. If Vokins was bothering you, he should have talked to me. I was always a much harder man than my brother. Yes, I don't approve of violence, Mr. Calhoun. Must be my medical training. Surgery is always much easier when the patient is unconscious. Oh, bad luck. Good day to you, ma'am. Is this where Mr. Heppelwhite holds his surgery? The doctor, Mr. Heppelwhite. He ain't here today, love. No, no, I know he ain't. Monday's his day, ain't it? Uh, might I come in? Did you make an appointment? Well, I wouldn't, would I, if he's not here? I'd just like a few words in confidence. You're not expected, then. No, ma'am. I'd like to talk about Mr. Heppelwhite. You from the hospital? Uh, may I come in? You treat all your patients like this, ma'am? Listen, mister, I don't know nothing about Mr. Heppelwhite. I just live in the back room and answer the door. If anyone comes from the hospital and is here, I'm to tell him he'll be on his way double quick. I can't let him in. Well, as he's not here, it don't matter, do it? Who is it, Peg? Oh, don't ask me what goes on upstairs. I've never been up there honest. I only answer the door. Is it a fella? From the hospital. Jimmy Heppelwhite, it's not his day. I know that voice. Well, did you ever? It's peeping Tom again. Change your mind, darling. Do you follow me here? Come on up to Flossie, then. No, thanks, Flossie. You come down to me this time. Oh, keep your picker up, Mr. Vokins. Sergeant Cribb won't let you down. I'm not interested in Cribb. It's Gerald I want to see. Well, where is he? Oh, don't agitate yourself. You're quite safe now with the constable here and me as well. I can't stay here forever, can I? Do you think Gerald would get me out of the country? Couldn't say. I don't know what you've got to tell him, do I? If I don't get his help, I'm a dead man. They're all in league. You know Epplewhite's one of them. Epplewhite? Oh, that takes some believing. Mr. Vokins, sister says you're to get dressed when you've had your tea. You're being discharged. Why well, can't I stay here? Is something the matter? Uh, couldn't he stay a bit longer? He's got a very special visitor coming to see him. Here, where's my tea? No more liquids for you, Mr. Thackeray. You're going down to the theatre in an hour. Mr. Heppelwhite is operating at five and you're first on the list. Just my blooming luck. When it's something worth having, I'm always last. I'll bring you some chloral in a minute. That'll make you feel nicely drowsy. Applewhite looks respectable enough, but I must say I was astonished to find him playing billiards with a scoundrel like Calhoun. What are we waiting for, Sergeant Cribb? We'll be moving in just a minute, sir. Ah. Did you make any inquiries? Yes, I did. They play quite often. It's a regular thing. Each player has to sign the book in the billiard room, you see. They play every Thursday evening and sometimes in the afternoons as well. Thursday? Did they play last week, sir? Assuredly. I talked to the man who was marking for them. The game went on till nearly midnight. The night that Fred Calhoun was shot. That's something to ponder. As for that other business, it doesn't bear thinking about. But a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons should be in the habit of visiting a woman of the town. It's too monstrous to contemplate. Unless, of course, he was there in his medical capacity. Every Monday afternoon, sir? It's a thought. Well, he was obviously an acquaintance of the Calhouns. Perhaps they came to some arrangements. That's for sure, sir. <laughs> Hello, darlings. That's a nice double for a shilling. Good God. Chief Inspector Jowett, this is Flossie. Oh, he's a perky one, I can tell. Don't mind me, love. Judges, surgeons, chief inspectors. I treat them all alike. Well, you're all the same when it comes to the basics, aren't you, duck? 
Time to move you, Mr. Thackeray. Mr. Heppelwhite's ready in the theatre. Where's my Sarge, then? Docile at last. Thank heavens for the chlorine. And he should be here by now. Mm. Oh, those people. No, stay here with the patient. Back on your feet again, Bokins. Good. I've brought a visitor to see you. You can't come visiting at any hour of the day or night. Police, sister. I am Chief Inspector Jarrett of Scotland Yard, and this lady... Lady? Chief Inspector, if you are here on authority, I'm obliged to let you stay, but I see no conceivable reason why this person should remain. I make no observation on the company you keep. I just declare that this is a hospital for sick men whose condition will in no way be improved by the presence of a painted woman. Who do you think you're talking about? I'll have you know that I'm the intimate acquaintance of some of the leading men in London. The Jew. That's of... enough, Flossie. And I'll bet my bed is a damn sight cleaner than hers. Stow it, woman. Constable. Let's get this over with as quickly as possible and leave sister in peace. Wilkins. What have you got to tell me? Well, what do you want to know, Chief Inspector? The name of Fred Calhoun's killer. I saw what happened. You actually witnessed the murder? Through a spy hole in the ceiling. Good Lord. Is that possible? There is a spy hole, sir, yes. First, I want you to guarantee me protection. That will be arranged if you need it. I do. You see, the killer is Joe Kilhoun. Joe wanted to be the king. It's as simple as that. Oh, there you are, sister. Tell me, have I got the wrong day? I've been waiting in the theatre for the last 20 minutes. Mr. Hepplewhite, I'm profoundly sorry. Oh. Nurse, take that patient down. Hello, Jowett. What are you doing here? Hepplewhite. Mr. Hepplewhite. Do you know this gentleman? Yes, he's a patient here. Or was? Do I know you? I suggest you know him from another place, sir. Hannibal Road, Stepney. What? Dear Mr. Hepplewhite, forgive me. I had to tell him about your surgery in Stepney. My surgery? Oh, dear. I visited the place, sir. Met your uh, partner in the practice. Hello, Jimmy, my love. I remember where you are, girl. Oh, please yourselves, then. This is a nightmare. Oh, God. Was that necessary, Sergeant? I had to find out why Vokins was terrified of Mr. Hepplewhite, sir. It was a case of blackmail. Mr. Hepplewhite, a blackmailer? No, no, sister. He was just visiting Flossie once a week. Vokins was blackmailing him. Oh. And when he found himself confined to bed here, he had a blue fit on seeing Mr. Hepplewhite in charge. His victim had a perfect chance to silence him. You must have made a tidy sum out of blackmailing the clients. But Fred Calhoun found out, didn't he? Made a call on you. And you shot him. No, no that's a lie. Now, your story's a lie. On Thursday, the night of the murder, Joe Calhoun was playing billiards at the Coco Tree Club with Mr. Hepplewhite. Mm. Tell you I saw it all. But not through the spy hole. Sorry, Charlie. I had to tell him. I was in the top room all evening, working. I heard the shot, too. Only I was in the wrong position to look. One thing I do know for sure. It weren't you I was with. Well, you did see it all, because you fired the shot. Joe Calhoun knew that. That's why he sent his men to finish you off. Go to the devil! Constable! Fred Calhoun. And I'm ready to kill again. So stay where you are. You, sister. Down here. You're gonna be my escort out of here. Well, look sharp about it. I think we'd better do as he says. If you so much as touch that man. Oh, he won't feel a thing. Move yourself. Fossey, get that door open. Stay there, Crib. Or he's a dead man. Is the operation over now?